So last time we talked about subsurface scattering and how to design without costume, without depending on costume. Thank you, Rosalinda. Um, so what we were saying last time was that the floral humanoids challenge was a challenge on, on, on how you interpret human anatomy through a filter of another anatomy you have to combine it with. So you're thinking about the mechanics of both anatomies and how to weave them together, how to maintain a human silhouette while keep it completely sourced and created out of something else, like a planet that took a plant, a plant, not planet, a plant that took the shape of a human. Not a planet. The planet was one of the challenges we were going to do, wasn't it? Doing a, a magical companion uh, and using a planet as inspiration. That was that would have been really cool, like using the, um, like Jupiter and the patterns on its surface. And yeah, anyways, shut up, spray. Um, uh, hopefully that one wins next. I really wanted that one, the magical companion one, to win. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and just delete this fella. Okay. And let's get started. So this here, this is an example of a of a floral humanoid. So uh, what I was saying last time was it's similar to a, a, how we design a chimera, getting two animals and combining their anatomy together and making it make sense. Um, so following the spine and seeing how you can affect it. So this is going in the right direction. It's a little too human. There are other things that could have been done to the legs, other ways to make it look a little bit more creepy. But I, what I was describing before was I, was I see this in a field of mushrooms and the protagonists are traveling through this new alien world and or this magical dimension or something. And, um, and they just see a bunch of mushrooms and suddenly the mushrooms come alive and start chasing them. They're real real enemies, they're real, um, like, predators, and then this is definitely something that I saw, this is beautiful, uh, you elongated the arms to make it work, but you kept the knees, and their knees are bending outward, which is not very animal-like, so that's going to make them look even creepy and very uncanny. One issue, though, is this texture issue. When we come to this section, we should have used a reference, something a little bit more like this just to show the under, like the patterns on the underside of the mushroom. Something very similar to this. That's the only thing I would have changed. Um, I would have, in, like it would have been a little bit more intimidating to see more of a, an, an arc like that, to see an even stronger arc in the body. And one other aspect, one third aspect that we could have used to really, really push the floral humanoid aspect, to push the, the believability of the, of the fauna and the flora over, over the human anatomy. So what I don't want to see is that it has, a, has a, a heart and lungs. What I want to see that it has, and it takes the shape of a human, but it has a bit of, a, of an animal, um, floral kind of animal combination to it. So I didn't want to make it a, 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 I didn't want to open the doors to the animal and have that part of the description, because animals, if when I open those doors, you guys can use any animal in any way. And we already did the creature design, we already did those, those, um, uh, like the, the sky creatures and the land creatures. We already did that last year. So I wanted it to be about how you combine anatomies more than anything. That underside is supposed to be just a little darker. So other than that, this this uh, mushroom top, which needs a bit more texture, is just reading as a basic rock. The like, let's jump into liquify. Let's see what we can pull off with liquify. Um, the gesture of the of the head of of the body could have been just a little bit more sinuous, a little bit more like a like a creature than a, uh, like a little bit more like a, I don't know how really what the word is to describe it, just less human, but in the shape of a human, more alien, I guess. A little bit more like that. And that would have given off the feeling of long weeds. Um, something else you could have done is, this seems a little bit planted, like it was just planted in there. Um, or rooted, whereas it has these legs and this agile body. The body is a very, very aerodynamic, very fast-running creature. And um, this, this, this um, 
magic here is a little bit too excessive. It's kind of throwing off the design. So if this was a character design and you're giving it off to a modeler, the model isn't going to model it attached to the floor every time. You have to give it to us. That's why I don't want environment. This is a little bit too much environment. So if you wanted to give it white tipped um, kind of feet, then you should have just done that outside of the environment. Don't combine it with its environment too much, even though it is a flower, I'm sure. There are other aspects that uh, of it that are in its relation to its running environment, but I wouldn't design it with the background. We're looking at it as a single case study of the, combining the mechanics of both, of both uh, anatomies. So the speed, I'm giving it agility right here, just like we see with a cheetah, so it's running really, really fast. However, um, the, the mushroom top, the very top of the mushroom, is just a little bit large. So it feels like something else could happen there. And this is where you could have brought in some petals. Um, maybe that's how it catches its, its prey. It's, it has a big flower at the top. It's got no head. It's got a bit of a Venus flytrap uh, system happening. That could have been one way to take it. It's just there was no anatomy happening up here, and you were depending solely on your human uh, part of the design, which is taking away from the... Uh, the fact that we're combining human and animal. And this is why I, I stretched and elongated the spine to make it behave less human. Because right now the only thing that's pushing it, the only detail we had, was the human aspect. And you have and There's a literal division between where the plant happens and where the human happens. But it's still an amazing design. It's an amazing concept. So the concept is top-notch. The design can use just a little bit more help. Just think about mechanics. Think about, okay, you have to think about the narrative. The narrative helps you answer questions. That's a major thing that concept artists have to remember. The narrative helps you answer questions. Write that down. And what does that mean? It just means that we are... Uh, what? How does it feed? How does it eat? Um, well, it runs, it catches its prey, and then it opens up its like belly area, and it just swallows the prey in like a Venus flytrap. Uh, up here are many, many really, really attractive colors, and it feeds mostly on insects. Um, and so right here, you could have used a more colorful mushroom. You could have had some petals. So it attracts here, chases its, 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 I mean, why would it need to attract and chase? So when an animal chases, it's just depending on its muscles, correct? When, it, when, a, when a predator chases, as we know from our world doesn't really need to attract a cheetah or a lion doesn't need to have really really sparkly um, like a sparkly mane to attract animals to it or something like that like some flowers do or some frogs do or uh, or that uh, one underwater fish with a little lamp on its head When a, when a creature can chase, it's just depending on its just raw strength to catch an animal instead of lure it in. So what's this, uh, what's this creation doing having such an agile body? Those are the questions you have to ask. That's why narrative is so great. So what I did was I darkened everything and I'm rebuilding the highest points along the furthest most part the closest to us of every one of these features. So we have a little bit more form. Right here, just trailing along the major form instead of it being so flat everywhere else. So I'm finding all of these areas. This is exactly what I did last time, thinking, thinking like a cylinder. Just the greater um, swell of the cylinder as it attracts the light source. <clears throat> Underwater fish are the best kind of fish. Yeah. Remember, guys, stay stay on the topic today. Make sure the chat doesn't um, go outside of the topic at hand. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm adding shadows to either side on the outsides. And the focal point is really... Um, channeled through this arm and the neck. So I'm bringing in more contrast around this arm. And I'll just desaturate those areas that were highlighted excessively. A beautiful jaw, beautiful anatomy. Um, 
I just really, really wouldn't separate the human from the uh, from the from the floral just like that. I would give it a little bit more of a sinewy um, alien type weed type type silhouette that would read read much better. And you definitely need to rework this upper part if you want to attach this to a portfolio. Okay, so this guy here, this is exactly what I was thinking when it comes to did read like making a floral humanoid. Um, so. Um, I like how you added that little thing here. The secrets, they shall be mine, Gizar. Seems like he's a League of Legends champion or something like that. Um, but if you guys do remember the way Ivern was designed in League of Legends, they did use some aspect of him as a, as a costume. So he was more more man than animal. Um, uh, more man than, than creature, sorry. But he does have very, very distinct... He doesn't have a skeleton. He doesn't have a circulatory system. He doesn't have a, a like a like a heart or anything like that. He's made of another another type, and that's and he does seem just a little bit, just a tiny bit, like he's wearing a costume. But the skeletal structure, there's no flesh, there's no muscle. Very very skinny, very tall, elongated. Think long when you think tree, like an ant. I'm gonna go back to examples like an ant. So they are a floral humanoid. And again, they have these joints, they have these parts to them. And this is why this piece right here, where is it? Um, I really like this one. Where is it? Where is it? Come on. There it is. You actually didn't bother making this feel like it was a costume. You showed what the inside was made of. It was like a sentient weed. And it took the silhouette and the shape of a human. This is exactly what I wanted to see. The colors are a bit primary. You definitely need to work on your colors. Um, this muddy color right here for the bark is just a little bit too... Um, the color is just very, very specific. It's a very specific kind of brown. And you shouldn't paint with that brown. Uh, what you should try to do is, because it's a, it's a creature, because there might be a light environment, you should try to harmonize all the colors together. So the green is too yellow of a green. The purple is kind of telling the story of a, of a more cool light environment. This brown color is out of nowhere. It's coming out of nowhere completely, out of a different palette. So it's like you chose all your colors from different sections of the map, just at random, instead of harmonizing them. And the way you harmonize colors is by choosing the local color first. So what's the main color that this object starts off with? I would start with green. And I would choose the light environment that the green comes from. Light environment means like the light, the amount of light in the room that's revealing that kind of green. And that is just how bright it is. What kind of sun is it? And this is a very, very bright sun that's revealing this. So we would get more of these yellows everywhere. Wouldn't We wouldn't get a, a glow in the eyes. It's just too bright out. Um, the colors you chose, that the objects that you had here, this green here is a very pastel green, but you chose a very bright green. These references are, are the very, very pastel green over here. Very dark, very murky colors. And a very baby green as well, not as saturated or as uh, strong or as cool, not as cool, as bright as saturated as what you chose here. So if you had kept to this original palette, you would have had a much more successful execution of these colors. This is pastel, this is pastel, and this is super bright and has touches of blue. So you could have followed that a little bit better. But design-wise, concept-wise, this looks great. Um, it is a humanoid, definitely you fit that. Three fingers, not perfectly human. Uh, not perfectly evolved around the human shape. The silhouette is kind of interrupted by these big uh, flowers. So if we did cancel out all of the colors, let me see, all of the values, sorry, and placed in a white, and then select inverse, and then a new layer, place in the black, we lose a lot of the detail. So this is this is great. This lower half here is great, but you've got these long legs, and you've got three three extra long legs. So it's kind of canceling out what these legs are doing for the silhouette. So what I would do is I would shorten these. They don't need to be that long. They've served their purpose. They're like little whiskers or tails or something like that that help it sense its environment. You could have stopped it here. These legs are doing the job of reaching down here. If you add three more, it just gets to be too busy really really busy. What you could have done here is it could have been two petals since you're going for the symmetrical and you could have brought back the shape of the head 
and really showed those spikes of that of this reference right here. Those were some nice spikes to show off. But even then, it looks a little bit like a B, which is okay. It looks like a, a, a what are they called? Those really mean bees. It's like the mean version of a bee. It doesn't even have the decency to make some honey. <laughs> us, uh, uh, what is it? Oh my god. A wasp. Wasp. Okay, so it looks a little bit like a wasp, which is really cool. Um, but it also has the silhouette of a human being. This is this is one that I really, really liked. Really liked how you stuck to the um to combining the anatomies instead of uh, just making it look like a costume. We see the skeleton, it doesn't look like it has lungs or, or a heart. So this one is really nice. I really like this one. Um I'm trying to see where that other one is right here so this here uh, this one is very very cute I don't want to shrink the eyes it's doing a hornet wasp yeah 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 hornet um, <laughs> yes they are they're perfect assholes what I would do is I would uh, I would completely shrink this lower body we want to have a little bit more of an intrigue happening a flower is large at the tops and just look how this how much smaller the lower part is it's not as fanned out so let's exaggerate that in our version Let's make the body even smaller. And not just that, show some sass. What that will do is it will give the standing gesture a gesture, an actual gesture. And it will make the top of the head feel a little bit more um, fantastic, which is what, what flowers usually are. They're just fabulous. So let me erase this. I am going to just ruin the, accidentally, not intentionally ruin the staff, but this is kind of what I mean. We want to exaggerate certain features, so whatever we see here, we want to exaggerate it. So what you've done is you've made these just fan out perfectly, symmetrically, whereas here, they kind of do this little thing. They, they, they warp around. See that? So you could have done a little bit more of that, like they're underwater. So you could have just find, found ways to match them and make them look like they're actually caught in the air. So what you do is that you just do this, and you just try to find ways to unify the anatomy together. You could have done this with this upper piece. Whatever happens here, exaggerate it. So whatever your reference is telling you, exaggerate it. As for the humanoids part of this design, if I was the director and I really wanted to exaggerate the, the beauty aspect, I would completely get rid of the nose and the mouth. The eyes are the last remnant, tiny little thing that's left behind of the human anatomy. So you kind of made it look like it is not a costume. It is still reading like a costume, especially because of the seam here. You could have just connected that. You don't need to show the neck. It reads more as a shirt. So all the signatures of a shirt, like let's say the seams, or the neckline, or the fact that it ends near the hip, these are all signatures of costumes. So don't copy that. Do a, do a cut where a cut wouldn't be. Now it looks like a bra, but that's okay. Do a cut where a cut wouldn't be. Have, have some coloring or spotting, because there's a lot of spotting just around the eyes, and these are spots, and they read, read a little bit like freckles. And this is a nice way to bring in detail cluster around the focal point. And a focal point that has more detail around it is a successful focal point. I would also go with that whole large hip, tiny waist, but very, very short chobit, chibi, that's not a chobit, what is it called, chibi? Chobit is something else entirely, Jesus Christ. Um, don't ask me why I know what a chub is. <laughs> um, chibi. And then you could, you could do the exact same thing we just saw with the previous design and just get rid of the extra, you know, don't assign any flesh. Maybe it's just the spine. And that's still very, very cute. Maybe when it walks, it does a little belly dance thing. It's a flower that looks like it's always in motion and it's a very, very happy flower. Chibi, chibi, chubby, chibi. It's chibi. I know it's chibi. Okay. 
So these are just some of the, the changes that I would make that make it read a lot more cute. This is very cute, and this is very cute. And combining them together on top of a, of a pre-made uh, kind of body type that we're predisposed to thinking is adorable, like a three-year-old with a, with, a, <laughs> with a sword is adorable. <laughs> What's it doing with a sword? What's it doing with a staff? So it's cute seeing how it works, how it walks. And I can just see it right now wobbling around as probably the main character in a game. But what you want to do is take away the human. So this arm is a little chunky. Maybe just give it like a whole fat arm. Um, the head, if the head is bigger, the better. If the bigger, the bigger, the better. Because what happens is, you see how before it felt like a, a woman, an older woman with just abnormally large eyes. And that's kind of just, it was half cute. And that's why it felt weird looking at it. But when we shrink that part down, <clears throat> so let me see if I can enlarge the head. The silhouette will read more to what you're going for, which is a cute little warrior that takes no one's shit. Okay, and there's always, always the fact that we need more highlights. These are flowers. They like the sun. So we need just a little bit more subsurface scattering to tell us where the sun is, where, where, where it is, what it's doing. And the subsurface scattering happens around shadows. Okay, so if this is the cast shadow, let me get my soft brush and a more solid brush. If this is the cast shadow. Right here, one petal casting a shadow on the next. Then, excuse me, then the soft uh, brush is used for the subsurface scattering right along there. And right along there. Subsurface scattering happens around shadows because shadows are less bright than the... They don't happen on highlighted areas because those areas are already so light. There is subsurface scattering, but the brightness is just already there. Okay, a little bit more light. So you see, um, breaking it down piece by piece, so deconstructing it mechanically as if you're putting a car together, put your character together like you're putting together a car. Think of the major frame, the main, the main frame where the mechanics happen, and look at how you can dress it up. Don't overdress it up, because then you're just depending on costumes. And even when it comes to a car, even just using this car metaphor, when I see cars overly dressed up, when, it, when, they're, when they're just overly done, they're uglier. But if you think about the most successful car designs, the most, the most successful cars, the cars that are seen as high-end, they have the most basic frames you've ever seen. And it's all about their function. It's all about their, 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 what, they, what they provide. Another thing that could make this little character look very, very big is the... Sorry about Skype is the uh, the shoulder pads. So this could have been another way for you to kind of just, just keep it looking cute and looking oversized and look like a tank. And you can only really t tell a tank is there by comparing it to the rest of the character. So in relation to her, I'm sure the rest of the flowers are just a little bit more, a little bit more um, soft looking. But I would definitely try this larger piece. And do you see how I'm not disconnecting it? It's it's very, very like a like a cell or a a unit of a like a how to describe it, like a separated piece of piece of armor. The one one part of the armor that's not necessarily sewed in or connected, but it's grown out of her. If you try to make sense too much, like you add this little line here and you add another stitch, it looks like clothing. When you keep it without that stitch, it looks like a like it's part of her. And right here in the center, what we could have done is um, you could put it in the source of her power, and you could have used a really, really nice color. So this right here, the flower, has a bit of a bright bit to it. What you could have done is make that the source of her power. So they all need to live somehow. And that, that could be the, the design, the thing that connects all of these things together is that they have a source of power and they're all going to die if they don't fight for it. Again, a narrative is really important. Even if it's just a random floating narrative inside, it doesn't have to be perfect. And there's that little glow back. I wish it could just be glowing from the inside out. Of course, when an object glows, 
anything nearby it is saturated so all the grass here is saturated just a little bit oh, that's too blue I wanted it to be green some more of a green okay so this in a game would just drive me nuts I would always play this character because this is what, what viewers want to see. Is they want to see the familiar, but they also want to see the different. What's different? What are you bringing that's different? Because the mouth isn't there, the head doesn't need space for the mouth. This is why I was going to go into liquify. Um, so I'm going to enlarge the head. And so the, when there isn't a mouth, nothing develops so that there's space. There's no jaw. There's no nose. There's nothing skeletally that needs all this space. So what we can do is just cut off the head, completely finish it off. When we say humanoid, when the oid is when we're missing parts of the anatomy. Remember that. Anything humanoid is missing anatomy. It's not perfectly human. Remember that. Write that down. Humanoid means missing human anatomy. So if I was the art director, I would have definitely made these changes. Um, to your design. I like the concept. I like the little warrior, the little decorated warrior, but there, have, there has to be a way for us to reinvent um, and re, like re, reinvent the, the, the combination of the anatomies together. Oid, oid, oid. <laughs> okay. So any questions regarding this? I do, I do ask you guys um, to write my name when you're asking the question so I can find them because the chat is moving really fast so let me just clean this up for you so this should have been something you could have seen early on in your in your, in the uh, in the silhouette these these should have been seen there should have detected this in your silhouette way early on but uh, but when we when the more we design the more mileage we have the less mistakes like this we make so don't worry too much that you didn't detect it not that bad but this is why we take time this is why we have narratives the narrative is so important so tell me tell me of one concept art design once designed for an amazing game that didn't spend time on the story the story guides the narrative the story does everything for the narrative okay so I'm going to select inverse and I'm going to just round off the design by darkening the because I don't want the, the, the little petals to, to throw us off. It is a headdress. Again, it does have, it does borrow from the, the, the whole costume thing. The costume thing isn't something you should ever depend on. Do not depend on costumes to help you design characters. That's something you should really write down right now. <laughs> okay? So I'm telling you guys, these challenges are really good for your portfolio. They'll get you hired, I promise. You just have to make sure you make these changes when you go back to your portfolio. Um, one thing about the stance, though. The stance is just a little awkward. It feels like she's about to fall down. So this is, but this is back to gesture. This has nothing to do with silhouette, and it's just back to the original lines you painted for the, for the, for the standing gesture. And if this challenge has revealed to you that you have issues with your standing gestures, please work on them. So what am I doing? I'm making this look a little bit more kind of balanced. That's why it looked like she was about to fall over because look how she's tipped over now. All right. So she can look like she's actually balanced and symmetrical and both legs are carrying the weight of the body equally. And I would just tilt this part backward. This is the point of these designs. They're supposed to be um, kind of like samples of what it's going to be like to work under an art director that will take all your work, everything you worked on, and they don't even pay you enough for it. Just think of that. And they change it completely. I've completely changed your design. This is what's going to happen to you in a studio. This is what happens. You pitch something, you think you're, you're so, like you're, they're going to take every idea that you make. They're not. They care less about you as, as, as the thinker. 
They care more about whether or not the story is going to be preserved. They talk to the writers. The writers are the divas of any project. It's all about the writers and whether or not they approve of it. And the art director is most likely related to or is the writer. Not related to, like part of the writing team. Or is the writer themselves. They want to see exactly what they've imagined. So a tiny little little brawler elf thing, a little a little flower thing. We can't even call it an elf, it doesn't have ears. We can't call it a human, it doesn't have it doesn't have a mouth. It can't speak, it's not it's not that's not doesn't doesn't have a social system like we do. It has arms and legs so it can run and walk. But we can see its insides like this, which is really, really creepy for us. You can just do that. That's fine. You can disconnect it completely. It doesn't matter. Just as long as we're, that's practically what's coming up, like Rayman style. Just disconnect it completely. Um, I wouldn't disconnect it, but maybe there's like a common seam between all the limbs that's like a little bit more of a, uh, like an energy connecting the limbs together. You could also do it this way. And one last thing is think golem. When we're thinking about a humanoid that doesn't have human features, we're thinking golem. By the way, are my uh, are my moderators here today? I don't think they are. Right, so when we think golem, a bunch of rocks connected by some lava energy, you know? When we think an air golem, we think a bunch of rocks connected by some sort of air energy as well. <clears throat> so let's look up like a golem. Lava golem. So many, so many people have drawn lava golems. Oh no, not lava golem. It's golem. Uh, one L. Okay. So we're thinking a bit more like this. This is a humanoid, but it doesn't have a human anatomy. It doesn't have a circulatory system or a respiratory system. Okay, I don't know what the fuck this is. What the fuck that is? It's so stupid. I hate these kinds of designs. They're so cheap. They're so easy to do. <clears throat> um, there was this, uh, there's Peter Moorbacher's Angelarium. He does an amazing job of keeping some parts of the human anatomy and replacing it with like other parts. Some are, some are really human and some are just so psychedelic. They're just so wonderful. Peter Moorbacher. Right, just just Google Angelarium. This is another example of how what you guys could have done to combine anatomies, to, to take some pieces out and preserve some to maintain the silhouette. Okay. Sexy anime golem. <laughs> All right, so flatten that. Yes, uh, this is a great piece. One thing that really bothers me with it is this. What you've done here is basically, if I search it up, um, okay, don't laugh. It's just the kind of makeup you're working from. I worked in makeup. I specialized in makeup. It, 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 it's very, it's very, very specific to this. Um, uh, fuck, what are they called? Oh my God, what are they called? Uh, okay. Okay, so we're basically seeing something like this. All right? Or this. Very Cirque du Soleil. The, the, the Cirque du Soleil makeup is a little bit different. And this is why we don't use makeup. This is why you could have done something else. Cirque du Soleil. You could have used something else to... um. symbolize this this kind of like uh, makeup style or what's happening in the face. You could have had plates and pieces and petals wrapped up in such a way that we see them in the makeup style but it's not really makeup. But it seems like a very flat way to get away with drawing a human face. You're just depending on the decoration entirely. And Cirque du Soleil is a little bit easier for me to kind of understand. They need a read of the face while they're on their trampolines and stuff from, for audience members in the distance. But it's really, really similar to this, except this is a little bit more uh, decorative. And this is, they, they think it's functional, it's not functional. You can't walk down the street looking like this. But it's decorative, it has a decorative aspect to it. Some people do their makeup like this. Or something very similar to it, the same silhouettes and patterns, maybe just not the excessive colors. Okay, 
So that's kind of what's happening in your design. And that, along with the fact that not only have you distorted the face with makeup, but the whites of the eyes are inverted to black. Um, you have a nose, which you really don't need. You don't need the nose. Take, get rid of the nose, tilt the eyes down. So what you could have done is tilt the eyes. That's why it's a little bit uncanny because you're using such feminine makeup on a very, very masculine face. The eyes are close together. So one thing you can do to make this just a little bit more appealing is just distance the eyes from each other or lower the mouth just a little bit more. So it reads more as if like it's going to look like a fish person, but that's fine. Just something to suggest that these are naturally occurring values instead of just being makeup. So we've moved the skeletal structure downward along with the makeup as if, yeah, these are like the, the, the makeup that an animal has, like a cheetah, or, or the designs on, on a lion, on a lion's face. And what you can do is just show that this surface is a little bit more mattified. It reads less as makeup. You could have carried this white down just something that looks more functional basically that's what I'm saying is the makeup was not functional now we have made it functional we've matched the root of the makeup to, to for the with the skeletal structure we've basically gotten rid of some of the signatures of humans so it doesn't look like they're wearing a bunch of makeup it's not even a human so oh, okay it's not a human so it must even have been born with these colors Could have done a little bit more with its bald head, but that's kind of added to the uh, to the weirdness of it, which is really cool. So it's got eyes, but they're not really eyes. Type of deal. Could have done something like this. Okay, so let me go read the questions you guys asked because I totally forgot. To read them. <laughs> Isarak, what do you think about Zyra from League of Legends as a humanoid character? So let's look her up. Zyra. Okay. She 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 was a little bit like it was she was wearing a costume. So that's definitely something that I noticed the first time. It didn't look like she was an actual plant creature. So it's more pinup and pinup I don't take pinup seriously as character design. You guys know this. Using sex to make a character read is not character design. It's pinup. It's fashion. Okay, so let's look up Halloween pinup. There's a pinup version of everything. Okay. It's just sexy with a theme. That's it. That's League of Legends. Sexy with a theme. Male sexy with a theme. Sometimes they've tried, you know, to be taken a little bit more seriously by bringing characters like Ilawai or something, which are really well done. And I will always and forever love the Kindred design so beautiful they didn't depend on sex for her um but yes most of the original characters are all sex all day and that's how they got the few people to come in so they could make enough money to fit to, to to fund characters like kindred i guess it's all one big big terrible thing but all right this is zyra all right this is zyra <laughs> i'm sorry for those kids who are seeing this i'm so sorry you can just tell mommy and daddy i'm teaching <laughs> a lesson um on you not using not using no bad sex sex bad um, and this, this is what I think of character designs like this, all right? You're literally cosplaying yourself. It's, it's weird. Like she was cosplaying herself. Zyra was in a cosplay and, um, she had this really great studio, some really good lighting and she was cos cosplaying herself. That's it. So when you think, like there were some other characters, um, Elise, is she the spider one? Um, I think, didn't she have like extra little, it looks like a headdress, Basically, um, uh, Victoria's, so I spelled that wrong, secret wings costume thingy. Okay, so images. So if it starts looking like this, all right, pinup, costume, negligee of sorts, I don't even know what the fuck that is. And then just some massive headdress that is attached to the body, God knows how. That's not character design, all right? This is not character design. This is costume design. Be aware of that. Be literate in this in this discourse. Be aware of this. This is a Victoria's Secret Halloween costume. It is not designing an actual combining the, the body of a of a spider with the body of a female. They could have really fucked with us, you know. They could have given her four legs, super thin waist, a massive thorax, 
and and um, like four boobs. <laughs> I don't care. They could have done something like that. Maybe no boobs. Maybe two boobs and make them like kind of out of the way. Um, that would have been really cool. That would have been more intimidating for me. But if I see a crazy boob lady crawling at me, I know her double Ds are slowing her down. I really just have to run at a really nice, like really, really easy, brisk pace and she wouldn't be able to catch up with me. Have you seen a woman with double Ds try to run? It's not possible. Okay, so I'm not intimidated by her. And yeah, when she has her spider power, she turns into a spider. That's not character design. You basically looked at a reference of a spider and you drew a spider. Okay? So good question, because it got us into looking at real life, like where these things have been used. But yeah, you you can't out <laughs> you can outrun a woman with double Ds. When I see a woman with like a cup running after me, I know this bitch is gonna catch me. I have to run really fast. There's an intimidate intimidation factor. Alright. Um, Tara Spriggan skin design. Uh, let's see that. Images. <clears throat> it's not sexy. Um, the thing that's glowing out, that kind of makes me feel like she's a golem. So remember I referred to the golem earlier. It's not sexy. It's more like Leona, if you guys know what that is. Um, who that is, and, the, and it's just like a bulky warrior female, kind of like a gladiator or a brawler or a, you know, very, very, very heavyweight. Um, but still, f design-wise, it's pretty boring. It's got the, the shoulder pads, the, the gauntlet, and the boob plate, and the crazy hair that's loose. I've seen this a thousand and one times. So uniqueness-wise, I'm not, I'm not completely taken, you know, by surprise. But I like the fact that they had this little glow factor. That if she's an actual tree, she's an actual tree person. Her skin is bark. Um, she's glowing inside out. It doesn't feel like human anatomy. It feels like an animal anatomy. It feels like some other kind of spirit. Um, it's kind of weird, you know. We have human, we have animal, but we don't have plant, actual sentient plant life. I think at one point there should have been like sentient plant life. Like imagine that. We have like something that's sentient but is a plant. I think that's the last thing left for us to discover on this earth. It's probably all underwater or something. But yeah, uniqueness wise, not, not so different, not so new. Always shoulder pads and, and, uh, and that business. So that's why we have to not depend on makeup. And again, what did I say earlier about using seams that are very similar to clothing? So this bikini right here is just, it's a male, it looks like a male, heavy at the top it had a male face but it had a bikini all i was seeing was uh was a uh, drag queen it was really reading as drag queen like heavy read of a drag queen so you've got to decide is it going to be a male is it going to be a bulky female there's no breast so it might benefit you to just thin down the thighs just a little bit so they read less as female because you've got this whole thing going on these massive things that are should probably or he probably just clubs people with. So now we're back to function. We got rid of that clothing seam. These look like decorative. These look decorative. They look like two birds. I would completely get rid of the heads. They look like feathers. Um, so what you could have done is make them feel like more like weeds or some kind of plant life that, that feathers off at the sides. But get rid of that signature. Don't depend on decoration. Don't depend on symbols. Actually think about mechanics and working with the mechanics. Okay. This one is very nice. You've given him like a frog kind of leg, so it's very swampy. I read swampy. Um, the belly is huge, which is okay. It kind of feels like he's a smart wizard, like he's an academic. Um, but uh, the belly is making him feel more like a, let's say, what was the last fatty that I saw? Gragas, okay? Like a Gragas character. Very, very, like a big burly loves to drink, loves to eat. Um, so you put this deliberately, you're pointing at his belly, you're saying he's gluttonous, you're saying that there is a, a fatness to him, like a fat monk who loves to eat. Um, so work with that. Tell us what go, go take on. Does he eat his, his victims? If he eats his victims, make his mouth a little bigger. So he, he's like a, both a magician and an eater. But if he's an eater, if he's primal, if he's idish, then he's not an academic anymore. Do you understand? So the closest thing would be, instead of redesigning him entirely, is to just cover this belly up and find something else. Like, let's say this is all blank. Find something else to fill here. Basically, you've got blankness right here. Between the head and the rest of the body is blank. You still have yet to add to this 
part of the mechanics. You have yet to connect this to this, and you can't use a big old belly. You lost those spikes, bring them back on the ground, on, on the feet. But right now what we want to see is, uh, is function over form. <clears throat> or function, not function over form, function with, uh, function with form. Maybe that's where he stores his knowledge. <laughs> yeah, let's look at the Kindred design. Let's look at it for a quick second. Kindred images. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we can find like a model. So they've taken away part of the human. They've enlarged the head. Took away the mouth and the and and the nose. Just look at that. It's not just the mask. They took. This is the anatomy of the creature. They gave it, did you guys ever see the Kindred's run cycle? I just love Kindred so much. Um, Kindred's love cy uh, run cycle, love cycle. Run cycle is very like, it skips like a little goat does. It's got big goat feet and it's just basically got a goat bottom. It's a chimera. Very, very little human to it other than the fact that it's got two arms, a legs, and a head. That was all that was left over and that's what I expect out of you guys. Yes, it's got a circulatory system. It's not a plant, it's an animal. So it needs some of that. Just take a look everywhere else. We've they've taken away from the human, and they replaced it with whatever it is they wanted to replace it. Whatever their narrative was, what God knows what their narrative was. Um, ours is plant, but this is what I mean by a successful design. It is not human, not relatable, utterly relatable, but still has that silhouette that makes us think it's cute, and so I can fall in love with Kindred. Do you understand? They could have used just a little bit more animal um, like uh, symbolism in there, um, but symbolism is very flat, so they, they probably didn't have much to work with. And I've seen the pre-designs, like the, like the concept art for Kindred before they des decided on this one. They went for all kinds of silhouettes. They really experimented before they decided on this one, which reads better from a distance, I guess. This is probably one of the most successful ones I've seen in this entire challenge. You've given me reason to believe that their insides are, are completely missing and it's just plant life filling up all the spaces. One thing they could have done to really push this is show us where the relief is so it doesn't read as a costume. So right here, you see these little weeds, they kind of stick out. You could have done something like that to the silhouette. You guys forget about the silhouette, please don't forget the edge. If you don't know whether or not this is going to read properly, make it a silhouette. Don't forget the silhouette test, all right? And in between some of these weeds, we could be see, we could see the background. That would have been really cool. You could see the background kind of like hollowed out. And it's probably super resilient because it's hollow. Okay, that would have been really cool. You got rid of the nose, you got rid of the mouth. Beautiful job. Big check marks for that. The headdress is just a little bit makeup-y, but I've never seen a headdress this big. I probably, probably need to look up some headdresses, but I, I like what I see here. The foot, since it has wings, have you, have you ever seen insects who have wings, really, really strong wings? If these are wings, they don't really need feet. They don't need to walk. They don't need to spend a long time on the ground. They fly more. She seems like she flutters from treetop to treetop. So I would have completely gotten rid of that. Beautiful standing gesture, very, very uh, fluid feeling. You could have just, um, if you wanted to be a little bit more female. Anytime there's a love interest in a, protagon in, a, in a story and the protagonist is in love with that love interest, you do this to the hips. You want us to also fall in love with the love interest. The viewer is told, hey, this is a seductress. She's managed to seduce the protagonist she'll seduce you too. So this would have been this would have been much better for the silhouette than anything else. It's a little bit more uh, masculine. But honestly design wise this is beautiful. It doesn't feel like boots does it? It just feels like overgrowth like long trunks that are long enough for these to have grown out. But I love what you did here so just don't forget about the silhouette. The silhouette is what makes you think hey all of these roots as they wrap around the arm should have had a little groove on the outside. See what I'm doing? This is detail. The edge provides detail. I don't know why you guys skip the edge. The edge, the actual outside, the outside line, you need to actually get a nice hard brush like what I'm doing right now and max 
up the detail like this. This alone brings in detail. No, you don't have to paint in every freckle if you do this. It's not a cheat. This is actual science. This is what makes something look like it has high, high resolution to it, that it has detail by making it separate from the background. We've talked about edges before, have we not? We put edges ahead of contrast and fine detail always. Then we do that by two types of edges, an angle edge or one object in front of the other kind of edge. So this is really reading as a humanoid, something that is not human, that is in the shape of a human. Some more of these over here. I'm not sure where I can find some of these major signatures of the... If I can get rid of the anatomy and still keep the weeds, just find a good balance. And not like bring a new anatomy with these groups, so that's exactly what I just did. Which is a bit of a mistake, I changed the thigh, do you see that? So I'm just going to add more of these little bulges of the uh, weeds or vines or whatever they're called. Okay, so any more questions? If I didn't answer your questions above, um, please uh, ask the question again. So any more questions? So let's take a bit, look at the before and after. Before, it felt like a costume and the feet were eh, a little bit awkward. Who needs the feet? She's a humanoid. She doesn't need the feet. She's got wings. She's got other ways. She's super light. She doesn't have all this weight at the foot, so I would get rid of that completely. This probably, if, if there was a win, like a reward system, this would get at least second place. Because this is where I'm seeing something that's uh, probably the other one that was, um, remember that other one with the greens and the spikes at the top? But, uh, but this is one of those that I would definitely want to see in a, uh, in, in like a, a store. Like if I saw this creature here as one of the warriors in Epic, the movie Epic, like they really tried, God bless them, with Epic. But they should have spent more time, instead of having actual humanoids, they should have made them, like, I mean, I guess it was a love interest between the boy and the girl protagonist, um, but, uh, but yeah, if they had gone just a, a step further and really made it feel like it was human, um, a shape, a human shape, and then and, uh, make it feel like a plant, that would have done more. Uh, ask on-topic questions, uh, using at Asirak, yes. Uh, what do you think of Guild War II Silvari design? It's very costumey. Um, some of them, I don't know if I can tell. I can tell if it's a scarf or it's a. I did have one of the Silvari busts in the in the reference. It's very costumey. Uh, but one thing I did I loved about the Silvari thing is the color combo. So that's why I had it in the inspirational references folder. The color combinations were beautiful. They just knew what they were, and they and they actually thought about. This is the one that was in the references. And uh, like here, it's a bit more human, so they weren't plant hybrids. They were more more human than plants. So our narrative isn't the same as the Silvari. But this is a very unique challenge that I gave you guys because very rarely do writers challenge themselves so scientifically. You'll, you'll see a scientist challenge himself for this kind of character design more than an artist. But one of these days, you're going to be asked to combine the mechanics of one animal with another animal, an animal with a human, an animal with a plant, a uh, human with a plant, and all three together, you're going to have to do more than costume design to pull that off. It has to function. But uh, but one thing I loved, I loved, 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 is how they kept the petals to actually look like uh, animals. I mean, sorry, plants. It's all these fucking keywords. How they weren't afraid to make the heads just a little more bald. How everything was a, was a plant version. So the hair was a plant version. Again, that's really, really close to the costume thing, so I wouldn't really go for that. And it looked like they had a circulatory system and a skeletal system, so they're very, very human. They just look like humans in costume. But I love the, I love the color combinations. This is exactly what I was looking for. They camouflage, and that's function. We're putting function ahead. Okay. So this is going to load. No, it's not going to load. Probably like a background website. <coughs> Stupid Reddit. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, Isra, would you consider Spriggins and Skyrim as a form of pinups? Hmm. Spriggins. And I just... I don't think I'm searching up the right thing. Um... 
Spriggans. Spriggans. All right. As a form of pinup. Ooh, I really like this. Exactly what we looked at today. Um, as a form of pinup. Possibly, if, if you find very sexy poses, yes, it's pinup. If it's not sexy, they just have an ass and two boobs. It's not, it's just human, right? There's a fine line. Actually, it's not. It's a very big line between intentionally sexy and accidentally sexy. All right, I'm scared of, <laughs> I want to Google both of them for you guys. I don't know. Should we dive into the depths? Should we see what intentionally sexy? Intentionally sexy is pinup, not pine up, pinup. All right, this is intentionally sexy. This right here. All right, oh, look at my titties. Look at my big lips. Look at my big hair. Look at my big eyes. Look at my leopard skin, uh, leopard skin shirt. This is pin. I'm trying to be sexy. Can you tell? Can you tell I'm trying to be sexy? And then you've got this one. This uh, it's kind of not trying. It's like oh hello. Yeah, this one's trying. Um, and then you've got I don't know what's in, what's accidentally sexy. Um, just anything that's not sticking their ass out like this, all right? <laughs> that's that's anything. Anything that's not doing this is not a pinup. Anything that's doing all of that up there is a pinup. So all of the League of Legends splashes from like the original, I don't know, characters or some of the recent ones as well. They all are trying very hard to be to be sexy, extremely hard. And then you've got accidental sexy, which is whatever is naturally happening, naturally occurring. Um, what do you think of Ben 10 Weldveen design? I, I can't look up any more, but, um, plants do have circulatory systems just to make things accurate. No, that's not making things accurate. That's, uh, that's technicalities. When I say circulatory system, I mean blood, I mean piercing it and it bleeding. I mean it having a blood and a heart and pumping blood and an, and, and an, like a, aerobically and having a skeletal system and having muscles and having like that pulley system with the muscles. Now that's the technicality. That's one of those science students in the, in the audience. I want to make sure that I am. Um, that I, I that I speak with all technicalities considered. No, they don't have a circulatory system that's like human. They have a very sp unique circulatory system inside them. What I'm talking about is our circulatory system. I want it to look like it doesn't have, yes, every weed, every one of these little thingies has a little bit of plant blood just oozing through it, making and feeding and providing the water. That's, that's a circulatory system. But what I'm saying is, it's not has like these main arteries. It doesn't have arteries. It doesn't have muscles. It doesn't have a belly. It doesn't have a excretory system, whatever it's called. It doesn't poop. Okay. And it doesn't have any genitals. It doesn't have any of those um, reproductive organs that we have. So it, it probably, again, it, it reproduces asexually or extra sexually. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Abu there, can you link Wenbo on the Discord? I invite link one more world for me. Okay. Um, yeah. That's about it. I just started. Do you recommend doing earlier challenges or jump in and join in from now? Um, if you haven't done the earlier challenges, they're really, really good for your portfolio. This is the kind of stuff employers really want to see. So you can go to the old challenges. I'm sure they're all still up. If you don't have the resource packs for them, just message me on, on Facebook and I can give you the resource pack for all of the old challenges. I still have them. I should probably make them available consistently um, on my website. I'll think about just re-uploading all of those resource packs again for those who miss them. But if you do want to start one now, um, just message me on Facebook and I'll send you the resource pack. <clears throat> um, transpiration travel and so something I'm a zoologist. I don't know. Um, okay, so any more questions? <clears throat> yes, there is a Discord server for those who are interested in staying connected to our Discord server. Uh, just, just, uh, damn it, do I have the? I mean, I'm offering it to you, and I don't even have the website for it. Um, uh, okay, so. There's the cop, okay, and that's, I'm um, just copying the general chat, right? I just copy the general chat. This is the Discord server, God willing, um, it'll work, all right? So if you guys wanted to join the Discord server, 
It's available here. Discord is available because you guys wanted it. I never thought Discord was, was useful. Um, but if you guys really just want to stay in chat together and um, still following the rules of the community, so no lewd stuff, don't link weird stuff. It's not a place to talk about furry fetish fantasies. Um, it's just everything that we're doing right now is in the Discord. And, um, and we're just uh, I'm trying not to let it get too populated. We still want to be able to listen to everyone's uh, questions and stuff. It's not going to get more populated than the community is hitting 4,000 plus, um, almost 5,000, I think. I'm not sure. But, uh, but yeah, the Discord is right there available for all of you to join. Isterek, the wings petals feel out of perspective. If she's standing sideways, shouldn't they face the same way? Um, well, some of them are going to be facing... Which petals, though? The, the, the cape? The cape... Um, some of them would face this way, so we'd have the front part of the cape and then the bottom part of the cape. And this cape faces this way, this cape faces this way, this one faces this way, and this one faces this way. So we're just seeing the side of this one. Maybe we could have seen the side of this cape. It doesn't really matter. It feels like, you're right, it does feel like all the cape faces this way while she looks that way. Um, like face looking at us, and then this is looking away from us. Uh, but that, that, yeah, that's a good observation. When do you consider someone ready for these sort of challenges? As soon as possible. A masterpiece is good for one thing only. Um, it is, well, two things if you push it, if you push my patience. Um, one thing that is really, really good for, for is revealing to you where you don't, what you don't know how to do yet. So if you don't know how to shade any bark, stop what you're doing, stop the masterpiece, get a bark reference and just start doing a bark study in grayscale. If you don't know how to draw a petal, if you don't know how to draw a flower petal, if you can't wrap your head around the basic ways petals wrap around each other in a flower that is a rose, um, then you could take that into a, a like a study, like a study, like a grayscale study, and then study that spe specifically. So that next time you jump into a masterpiece, you're ready. You're like, yeah, I studied roses. I'm ready. Um, so these are good for revealing to you what you don't yet know. If you're like, and I'm sorry for using this term, if you're super beginner, like you're really, really super beginner, you just started, don't try these. Don't try these challenges. They're available for anyone who has a thorough understanding or at least topical understanding of fundamentals, basic standing gesture. If you feel like you're ready to challenge what you know, you've spent a good year reading the vocabulary, watching me critique, watching other people draw, looking at what they do. You can sketch a face. You can sketch a body. Um and you just want to test it, you can try these. But if you've never sketched a body before, and your face studies are still asymmetrical, and you haven't wrapped your head around basic beauty standards, you're not ready for these challenges. Um, I just started. Do you recommend doing earlier challenges? I read that. Um... Um, do you think up design and fit it into the function or think of the function of the creature first or is it a process um, of working through both? Yes, uh, function and design come together eventually. You have to keep function in mind and design is originated from the narrative. So the first thing that happens, Rachel Cush, is the um, the narrative. What is happening? What is the what? Who met who? And what happened when they met each other? And and why are they ha working together to fight who? And what did that person do to piss everybody off? And how are they fighting for it? And how are they going to run? And how are they flying? And how do we make this look really really cool for the viewers? And how do we stay um, creative and and come up with our own ideas? And how do we make it all make sense? And we're not just being different for different sake, like Final Fantasy character designs. Um, and those are just costume designs. I don't make character designs anymore. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's basically what you're doing. You're thinking about the narrative and you're meeting the needs of the narrative with successful and function, uh, functional and full of form designs. Sorry, that was not eloquent. This is just so much to fit in so many ideas. I lose eloquence over knowledge over just making sure that sentence has more knowledge that eloquence goes out the window. <clears throat> um, Okay, so any more questions? I'm just looking for them. Uh, where can I sort of, what can I sort of find a list of all the basics practices, like form studies? Um, a list of the basics is the is a thing of legend. A list of the basics is what is like the holy grail for artists. Hey, give me a list of all the things I'm supposed to include in my painting. A list of the a list of the things that you need is basically the fundamentals, and fundamentals branch out 
indefinitely. They all source from the basics, which is something I cover in my classes indefinitely. Like this one ass in my uh, in my video, why your drawing suck? He's like, you spent so long telling me why I suck, and he didn't get tell me how to fix it. I'm like, if you look behind you for just a quick second, just turn around behind you, you'll find hundreds of my videos that cover all of that. Um, I cover all of the fundamentals. Um, I, I just really, really pissed off. It was a bit of an angsty reply. <laughs> I usually don't reply to asses like that, but anyway, um, my whole channel is available for you. Um, I, I just go, just watch the, you know, just turn off, turn on the critique hours or other lessons on YouTube. I'm not trying to just promote myself. Um, turn on whatever it is you're going to listen to. Uh, watch some, like have some breakfast, or watch some TV maybe, uh, like in the background, maybe not watch TV. Just have some breakfast and sketch um, and just keep that playing in the background. Just that alone will get you more familiar with the, with the, um, with the classes. Of course, application is needed. You're going to have to give these four fundamentals a try, but you start, you start just by learning and listening to the discourse, learning and listening to the vocabulary of it all. That's, that's all I can say to you, um, Artan. <clears throat> um, uh, you've done plenty of videos on binary gender and exaggerated masculine feminine features, but will you ever do anything on androgyny? Personally, I like experimenting with different features. Um, anything solely dedicated to that? Not really. Um, I'm mostly just focused on the fundamentals, and then you guys do what you can with the fundamentals after that. However, I have numerous, numerous um, uh, critique videos where I talk about the alternative, more androgynous version of the paint over that I'm doing. So I could have been critiquing any face, and then it was supposed to be masculine, but it was a little bit too feminine, and it was supposed to be like a brawler kind of guy or a superman, and I end up just you know telling them, okay, this is the masculine version, unless you wanted him to look deliberately androgynous. So I've, I've done that before, if you can find those videos. And really, they're just scattered all over my channel. I have no way of indexing, specifically painting by painting, what I've critiqued. It's pretty much an open, open highway. Um... Uh, you often tell us, however, to stick to one end of the spectrum. Um, where is this, however, coming to? You often tell us, oh, this is the same question from before. Okay. Um, are you going to give your books a proper burial? <laughs> I've since taken my books off my, off my website and my store. I feel like my books have done their service. Um, I feel like I can update the knowledge now with more of what I've learned in the last two or three years of you know, teaching professionally. My, the more I teach, the more experience I get dealing with students, the more case studies I have that make it that much easier to, to relate to my reader. Uh, so I will be rewriting these books and bringing in more information into one final copy, a final thesis of all of my studies and all of my um, practices. And unlike what I did before, uh, this time I will have diagrams, full, full diagrams. It won't be just be a booklet. It'll be a complete guide. Um, complete guide, and I usually don't like calling anything I do complete because I'm still a student myself, and these were just booklets, notebooks for you guys. Um, but I've since uh, learned a lot, and um, I feel like I can offer more in in a, in a text format. So I've taken them down so I can rewrite it. It'll take a while. I'm not promising any deadlines. Um, it's just as time permits, I'll just sit on my dining table and just write. <clears throat> but wouldn't masterpieces also... Uh, uh, a way for getting followers. I hear posting more will get you more notice on commissions. Um, no, I did a lot of studies before and I get more followers now from my studies than I do with my masterpieces. Masterpieces get you um, attention for employment definitely. If you are in a position, I'm not saying everyone is the same, if you're in a position where you need to make money soon and you have some reasonable skill that's hired, hireable, then by all means tr test some character test test your skills with some masterpieces but please remember that they are just a frame in your work they are a frame that, that ideally don't make masterpieces but if you've got to work you've got to work um, if you want to be a student however if you want to be my student it's only studies here on out and if you can afford to be a student are all those works you are going to to work with today what do you mean? Are all those works you are going to work with today? <clears throat> um, uh, some of these I couldn't get to. I have to leave soon. Um, so I, I really tried to get to everyone. Almost every challenge, some people get left behind. I tried to talk about all of them. Um, maybe I can talk about them really, really quickly in a second, but I do want to answer some more questions. 
um, how to pick out good references for studies. Uh, stay away from overly exposed photographs. Stay away from excessive saturation. In fact, just grayscale your references until further notice and uh, find references that have actual cast shadows. When a reference has cast shadows, it's got some good light to it. Make sure it's not overexposed, though. Pure whites and pure blacks in the reference is really bad amateur editing by the photogra photographer. I will update you guys on the next challenge, and you guys will be, um, if you just follow the community on the wall, um, I will, you'll see the poll up as soon as I'm ready. How to art. Art, art, art. <laughs> I'm struggling going away with from realistic drawing. Notice that many went to the cartoon style. Should I do that as well to broaden my designs? Um, Rosalinda, no matter how, much, how hard you try, you're never going to be able to take away the realism that you've worked really, really hard to be able to see. You can't unlearn form once you learn it. However, um, that is something that you'll have that other cartoon artists don't have, is that extra edge, an actual extra edge, the actual extra three-dimensional um, the part of the design that you're going to bring in for the cartoony style. So go have at it. Um, try the weirdly large head. Try the weird small bodies. Try the weird flat lips and, and easy to animate silhouettes. Go for that. Just remember that if you bring in that extra little bit of three dimension, you're bringing in an extra charm and an extra be believability. Realism has never crippled or inhibited the successful read of anything. Any style that you find is a deliberate break of the rules and a very guided break of the rules. They still keep a lot of the rules in there. <clears throat> I enjoy the info you do give out. At times I find it can be hard for me to hear, but that is also how I know that is where I need to grow as an artist as well. Yeah, it, it, when you go to the gym and you're really, really unfit and you don't have, yeah, you're terrible, and you have like, co like cholesterol and stuff, um, almost a contrast for cholesterol. It's the same thing. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, you, you get on the treadmill for the first time. It hurts like a bitch the next day. You can't walk. You can't breathe. It's hard. But it gets easier. What's good for us is never very good for us. Um, and you have to, you just we have to wait through that until it feels good. <laughs> okay? Until you just sit there in your study and you're just loving it. You're loving the grayscale. You're loving the ability to just focus on one edge at a time. You're loving it. And you, you, you learn to master everything as you go in that, in that study environment. I promise you the next time you jump into a masterpiece, preferably, hopefully next year's time, um, you will be that much more confident. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm not much more skilled. I'm just gonna take a look at these. Um, I like, I love what you did here, uh, but again, it's the same stuff. It feels just a little bit like a costume. So what you could have done, which would have been really, really nice, is if we um, kind of just extended the split of his head, like the petal, all the way down his face. That would have felt more like he's, okay, so he's a plant, right? Yeah, he's a plant, but he's not a plant. He's a plant that can talk to us. And that's what we want to see. You've given him a mouth. You've given him a nose. I would get rid of the nose and keep the mouth because he's supposed to be talking. He still looks cute, doesn't he? He looks even more cute now that we just have the, uh, the mouth. And we just have a split right here, and you can track where the inner part of his flower is right along here. You could give him that little that little thing that flowers have. I think it's the penis of the flower, isn't it? Something like that. As for the rest of the body, um, same thing with the feet, but he is walking. He's a walking creature, so he needs the feet. And that's part of the human. Um, I don't know where his other arm is in this piece. Yeah, there it is. And um, trying to think about it in ways where we can make, we can keep all this cuteness that he has. So I would make the legs like seem like they're um, kind of woven together with weeds. Just like that. Show the points where we're seeing the background. This is a great quick little cheat to make it look more, <laughs> more planty and less human. To show the background through the weeds. <laughs> okay, try that. Okay, so I'm just showing more of this. The 
believe it or not, we're all the same, and our brain has the same weaknesses to it. And a form study does for us what it, what it does for the next guy. Unless we have some major predispositions and we spent half our life blind and we haven't really properly connected to the world around us visually, for all us boring, normal people, uh, we all suffer the same issues. We all have symbolic uh, weaknesses. We all watched anime. <laughs> we all did all that stuff. So please trust me when I tell you a form study will help you. So doing this has kind of helped the feeling that he's not just a... Uh, it's not just a costume. As for these, very, very costume. Extremely costumous. Costumous. That should be a new term. All right, you guys are officially permitted to use this term in your critiques for each other. <clears throat> this is just lovely. I love this one. But you interrupted the only thing that was carrying the face, the human aspect. So you have two arms and a leg that looks like an alien, but we need this downward tilt. I'm telling you guys, cuteness is cuteness is cuteness. It's it's a cute animal when it when it's tiny, big head and big eyes. That's it. That's what makes an animal cute. There's a whole documentary on it. Someone linked in the in the community a while back. They were talking about beauty. I love this core shadow you have here. This cast shadow, sorry, for the nose. Oh, beautiful. But we need this little tilt in the eyes because that's what's going to carry the cute. Another thing that's not allowing the cute to work, because this is cute whether you like it or not. I'm not, this guy is not going to, it's not planning world domination. Only in Adventure Time with something this cute, <laughs> plan world domination. But his legs need to be shorter. Okay, he doesn't look like he walks very far. He's wearing MC Hammer pants, so he's, he's not chasing after anyone anytime soon. So we've got a very, very, you know, specific cuteness signature we're pulling from to execute this design. And this is what it is. We've tilted the eyes down, giving them some size. When it's when he's got long legs, he's kind of creepy, doesn't he? He looks kind of creepy. Like a, like a really, really tall man wearing really, really small children's clothes. That's always going to be creepy. If you ever had to... I'm so sorry. If you ever had to design a pedophile or design a villain that's into children or something really macabre like that um you need to give him really really long limbs and give him really really adolescent clothing uh one of the reasons why anton Chigurh from no country for old men was so creepy is because he had a bullet like he had that mushroom cut my brother had that mushroom cut when he was a kid so anton sugar i don't know how to spell his name it's the girl. All right, he's really creepy because he's got a kid's cut. He's got a kid's haircut. It's really 60s, and it's like he never stopped being 16. Um, this is not. This cut is nowhere else in the in the movie. This is how they singled him out. We use him a lot in our character design, and I think as a character they designed him very well. Um, this haircut is what makes him look creepy. So if you combine fully long limbs. And fully developed male, actually bigger than usual male. He towers over everyone, this actor, um, in the movie at least. And uh, and you give him adolescent features and signatures, that's when it's going to be creepy. So you don't want the creepy aspect, you want to reinforce the cute aspect. So this is cute. It looks like a very vulnerable creature because we've shrunken its legs. Um, we've shortened its legs, made it look a little bit more uh, adorable. And we've enlarged the eyes just slightly. You can, if you want, enlarge the eyes even more. Um, and enlarge the head as well. Damn, hello, Nightmare. <laughs> that guy was terrifying. He scared the crap out of me. Um, he's just, he scared the crap out of me. Uh, anime was a mistake, Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah. <laughs> he says that, but he's an animator. He's just a grumpy old man. That's not true. We can't dismiss him like that. Um, this one is beautiful. There's no hands. It does not read as a as like a, a costume that much. It only reads as a costume when I get down here. What I would have done is I would have made his legs extremely thin. Okay, doing that alone is gonna get rid of that humanness to him. He's gonna it's gonna make him look like um, you know Groot. Groot is a very, very good example of a floral humanoid. 
Okay, it's going to make him look very Groot-like. Groot had that weirdness. Though he was a bit bulky and he looked like a superhero. But um, he had that um, ness to him, which is, he looked like a golem. He had pieces of him, like plates. Every part of him looked like it was put together by, by, by one, one system. He didn't have an internal heartbeat or anything like that. He just was a spirit stuck inside a bunch of bark. And permanently stuck inside it. Kind of like a titan or something ancient or a god or something like that. Like a god of a forest that no longer has a planet. So he just decided to help. Is that the story? Is that the story? He decided to help um, this group of superheroes. Quote unquote superheroes. Okay. So what we're doing here is it's starting to look like 60s leg warmers. But I think it looks it adds to it. One thing you did here is you gave him laugh lines. And he's, he has a very boy face. Doing this has given him like 30 extra years. Okay, the difference between 2002 Legolas with, with 2017 Legolas. 2016 or 2015 Legolas. Okay, you guys have seen the difference between the two. Um, yeah. Okay. So that aged him just a little bit. And one thing he could have done is brought a little bit more light around his face. So he's got all his personality in his face, and he's got his morphed version of himself. And his uh, This also can read as, like, the narrative could have been... I could have written something for you guys. I was just a little bit lazy. I'm so sorry. But I could have written something like, you know, you were turned into a plant. Um, everything you knew is now just changed, and you were cursed to be a plant for the rest of your life. Um, but you're still a human, so there's still parts of you that are human. That's what a floral humanoid is, but I could have written a little thing for you guys. Narrative is really, really, really super important. So you could have make him you could have made him look a little less old. See how old he looked? He had those little laugh lines. Yes, kids have those, but we in our photo in our images, they're not photographs. We don't get away with them like a photograph does. And ours, the viewer will see old before they see realistically um, organic. But I love what you did here. Um, again, we want to see a split in the head. When we split the head open, we no longer see a brain. We see a hollowness. That's what instantly reads as a humanoid. Just like in the Pirates of the Caribbean um, designs for those fish people. At uh, Dead Man's Chest. And then this one um, feels a little... Uh, apart from these, which are very, very nicely done. They're actual weeds sewn together or, or, or braided together and the arms are braided together. Apart from that, it looks just a little bit like costume because what you've done, again, remember that thing that I said earlier on? If it has the seam of a clothing, it's going to read as clothing. He doesn't have a natural cape. Nature didn't give him a natural cape unless he cut part of his petals off and did something or is wearing flower people clothing. But again, it's the humanoid. We're designing it so someone can model it and we can put the clothes on later. I would just get rid of the cape. It's such a nice little thing you did here. I would get rid of the tail. A lot is happening up here. You don't need a cape as well, unless he's a king. The ears are a little problematic, but again, it's a humanoid. You can get away with that. Um, the chest piece feels like decoration. This should have been, you should have shown this as some sort of important, vital thing to his survival. Maybe pieces and plates of the flower kind of move together. And sometimes it opens up, revealing like a stem of light inside, and I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? I like how you blended these in so they look like they're connected. Um, as the wind become, as the winds become fiercer, we may bend but never break. Okay, that's beautiful. Um, the eyes are just a little bit large for an old person, so to down to the portraiture and the face, which is again in a study you can take in a portrait, like in a 14-day challenge. I know all of these grayscale studies suck. I know they suck, but they make a difference. I shrunk his eyes to oblivion, and honestly, I have more respect for him now. He doesn't have these humongous eyes. He looks like he's old. He has a lot of age to him. He's aged, but he's immortal at the same time, like the elves. You could have given him a little elf here. Yeah, but when all else fails, use the elf here. <laughs> 
as the great canon of our design <laughs> history has has repeated time and time again. Okay, you can give him like humongous elf ears. Um, the more the merrier. Try it. Go crazy. And when you go crazy in a silhouette, you bring back a wonderful, wonderful scale system. You can you can't really appreciate scale when you have all this detail because like oh yeah this flower is just doing just fine this flower is beautiful beautifully painted painted by the way um, but yeah it's it's not enough to carry the the reed I would have brought in like humongous ears just humongous ass ears maybe like a chip in one of them um, the flower at the top looks a little bit funny um, maybe you could have made it bloom maybe you could have made it a low flower like this in the back um, but yeah. That's all for today. Um, uh, last class, you said there would be one design we'd all agree was the best one. Which one was that? Oh, no, I was saying that hypothetically. I'm saying that there will eventually be one that we all agree with, that we all think is wonderful. We respond to and we only responded to it because it was uh, using all the fundamentals properly. Any more questions? Just to continue, like it could be considered a way to study. Um, okay, would you say that trying to draw those images that you just really want to draw, but it'd be kind of considered a masterpiece, is a bad idea? Um, like it could be considered a way to study. If I if I say out loud in public and gather all my people and say masterpieces are good as a way to study, um, I would never be able to help you guys, would I? So if you you know ju judge yourselves, if you feel like you are studying still while trying this cool idea that popped into your brain you're a creative thinker you started drawing because you're inspired so yes you can try that way just remember don't attach yourself to it don't represent it in your portfolio for the next seven years of your life it's just a tiny little uh, frame in the great animation of your of your journey it's not final and um, the thing is I can't publicly say go ahead and use your masterpieces I really can't say that Masterpieces suck. They stand in your way. They don't let you uh, venture into what you don't know and hone in on it. Um, they they kind of keep you topically skipping over the water, avoiding any real work, rep misrepresenting yourself as, an, uh, as a successful skilled artist because you've managed to draw one face and one angle and only certain color combination and you've continued to redraw characters with that one face over and over again, changing the costume. There have been artists who are very successful who do that exactly, and I have zero respect for them uh, because they haven't actually taken on this live storing of information of law and, and physics and fundamentals to actually bring a real character to life. They have a very limited view on their execution of their skills, and it's a very commercial view, very assembly line. That is what, what you're, where you're headed if you constantly do masterpieces pieces and you don't study. <clears throat> uh, so <laughs> I vote Cy Zyra also vote Bard Bard is a really good design as well I'm not sure what they were going for for him but I like I like Bard as well when they got into that whole Bard kindred thing um, uh, Ivern they really started to just think about cool characters really new cool anatomies but if you like today's class and you want to stick with us go to istabrak.com to find the link right here I can't link my link because it's an admin link um, go here, join. Um, so it's 4,400. Okay. <clears throat> and um, the next, so I'm going to take this down. Oh, right. I'm not, I'm not in my admin account. Um, and I will, I will send, I'll set up a poll. And the poll will have all of the next choices that you guys can vote on for the next challenge. I usually keep the poll up for three weeks. And then after three weeks, I assign the design. I would give you the, the, the challenge, I give you the resource pack, and you guys start working in a month after that, we uh, we do the day. Okay, the thing is, I don't want to always have a, have a design up, a design challenge up. I do them every two months, so I'll try to, I'm not going to rush the next one, all right? But uh, thank you, um, Bard is absolutely the best design. <laughs> ben, you're just really, really biased, okay? <laughs> Okay, Bado. <clears throat> oh, you guys can try if you if you if you're late for the design challenge, you can still try it. Again, if you want the resource pack, okay. How many want the resource packs up indefinitely? Let's just run the vote now. How many want me? To, how many want me to have the resource packs in the community up indefinitely for you to download? I just need a I just need a yes or a no. <laughs> 
<laughs> why would it be a no? I mean, why would it be a no? A yes, it's a good thing. <laughs> but um, but yeah, fine. I'll upload them all um, as a, as a as a Dropbox link for you to download. I'll re-upload all of the resource packs, and uh, you guys can try the old designs. Okay, the old challenges from last year. We did like five or six. I forget. From the villain to the witch's hovel, uh, some environment stuff. Um, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> We're going to get 200. 200, yes. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two, okay. Okay, Jeremy. <laughs> Guys, type one or she won't consider your vote. <laughs> I see the yeses. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'll keep them up. So join the community. If you want your work sent back to you, message me on Facebook. Um, YouTube is where I post all of these recordings, as you know. Uh, Twitter is for announcements, and Instagram is for my personal studies, um, which isn't really important. Um, anyways, have a great day, guys. I will see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, look out for the next poll. Bye-bye.